Hello, my name is Richard Cronice, and this is another episode on my YouTube station called Dad's Learning Videos. I guess you can also find it by just looking up Richard Cronice on YouTube. So, what shall we learn for today? Well, first an introduction. Um, we will learn Excel quality control techniques using Excel 2003. I'll explain that in a moment. The techniques are really quite valid for Excel 2007 and 2010. But first, a brief introduction as to who I am. I am a business analyst, project manager, and SharePoint evangelist in Chicago, Illinois, USA. You can find me on LinkedIn, and my current learning focus is PMP and Microsoft SharePoint. And for the fun of it, I do these videos in an effort to brand myself. So today, we're going to learn more about Excel quality control techniques, perhaps some stuff that uh, you don't know or stuff that you should teach your staff. Uh, a little bit of a background, uh, I am using some videos that I built in the winter of 2004. And let's take a look at them right now. I'll go over to here. Before I even knew about uh, YouTube videos, I had created this with Camtasia. So we'll open this up. And you'll see what I built uh, back in 2004. It was actually 50 different videos that took up approximately five hours of training and were a lot of fun to build. But today we're going to take a look at other quality control techniques. Looks like this. Let's see what I sound like or hear what I sounded like back in 2004. Hello, this is Chapter 2, The Secret to Excel, and this is Section C, a little bit extra, something final. Um, I'm looking at a Word document that I built for you, and we have some points to go over, the bird's eye view, control home, control end. To get this done, I'm looking over at the Excel learning file, .xls. I'm still using that as an example. Uh, going back to this, the bird's eye view, what does it mean? Often when someone gives me a brand new spreadsheet, what I'll do is I'll go to perhaps 25% just to see how much information is there. Sometimes you'll find that data is being hidden off to the right or down below. So I like to do the bird's eye view getting by the way, I'm back in 2013 right now. I want you to know that this technique of using ViewZoom may have a different interface up here, but the concept and the usage is still the same for Excel 2010 and 2007. Let's continue. At 25% or even going as low as 10% to see what's on my screen. This may seem a bit uh, silly, but when you're dealing with spreadsheets that are extremely large, or have been given to you by people and you don't quite know them, you'll find that doing the bird's eye view is an excellent technique. Uh, technique. Um, another technique that I use just to become familiar with spreadsheets that are new to me uh, is control home, control end. This is basic stuff that you may have received in a class, um, but a control home takes you to the beginning of that spreadsheet and a control end takes you to the bottom right of the spreadsheet. In this case, we see that the bottom right is column O and row 18. And just for a better perspective, I'm going into 50%, and you can see that it's on the bottom right. Changing it back to 100%. So we've gone through two techniques, two extra techniques. The bird's eye view, where you do a view zoom of 25 or 10%. The control home, control end. Uh, there's also a checking of all sheets. Let's go back to this. This seems pretty obvious that this particular spreadsheet has different worksheets. You've got the secret to Excel, you've got Oops, you've got My Dear Aunt Sally, and the different spreadsheets have different names, so it makes sense that you would look at them. But sometimes you'll be working on a spreadsheet, and here I'm on a spreadsheet, you might think that it's completely blank. When in fact, sheet one is blank, and I go to sheet two, and I find that there's information there. Well, what would happen if there was something on this page? What would happen if there was actually text, numbers, or formulas on this page? What would happen if you assumed there was nothing at all in this spreadsheet? Let's say that someone gave you a spreadsheet and maybe this was called uh, uh, profits and you looked at it and found that there was some data there but you never decided to check sheet number two when in fact there was some data there or sheet number three. This just really points out that when you're working with spreadsheets or inheriting someone's spreadsheets you definitely want to check all the sheets to make sure that uh, there either is or is not something there. The next technique is insert name define. For this, I go back to uh, looking at which file? Looking at Excel learning file. By the way, back to 2013, 
The interface is very different for finding uh, named ranges in Excel 2007 and 2010, but the concept remains the same, that if you can find named ranges, you really should find out why they have been used. So we'll go back to 2004. Sometimes people use range names. Um, I use range names uh, sometimes for formulas. Sometimes I use range names when I'm building macros. And it's a fairly complex topic, but from a quality control standpoint, if you do a uh, insert name define, you'll see that there's some range names that are here. There's apparently uh, my family budget, potential patients. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail to try to explain how they work in this spreadsheet. The real point is that if you work on someone's spreadsheet, and that spreadsheet is new to you, and you do insert name and define, and you find that there are ranges, uh, named ranges, it might be a good idea to find out why those ranges were named and what they're doing. The final technique uh, of this uh, Chapter 2 sequence is doing tools, macros, macros. Here on this particular spreadsheet, back to 2013, I hope you don't mind, once again this is very different for 2007 and 2010, but the concept remains the same. If macros are involved or named somewhere, it makes sense that you find out why they have been used. Back to 2004. Um, I, let's say I just received it from someone. I'll do tools, macro, macros, and I'll find that there's absolutely no macros that have been defined. But sometimes when you do this command on someone else's spreadsheet, a tools, macro, macros command, you'll find that someone has a number of macros, and if you've inherited this spreadsheet, you may have no idea at all that those macros existed. If you do see macros here, it makes sense that you research their purpose and what they're doing. So just to summarize these additional techniques for Chapter 2, um, this one in this section we talked about the bird's eye, where you do view zoom at 25 or 10 percent. We talked about control home, control end, to go to the upper left and the uh, bottom right of your spreadsheet. The checking of all sheets, to make sure that if a sheet exists in a spreadsheet to see whether or not it has data. And the menu command insert name define that's used to verify if a range name was created because range names are often used for specialized math or VLOOKUP functions or macros. And the final technique just that I use to become familiar with spreadsheets that have been given to me or that I have to research I'll do tools, macros, macros and what that will do is it'll show if any macros exist and if macros exist, I'm going to do my best to find out what those macros do. So this was all in relation to Chapter 2. Don't forget our best friend, which was Control Grave, the secret to Excel, which shows all formulas not as numbers, but as logical text. That's Chapter 2. I uh, look forward to teaching you Chapter 3, and thank you. Hello, this is Chapter 3 from the World Short. I had a little bit of trouble there. Let's return to the end of the lesson and just say that you've learned some quality control techniques that perhaps you didn't know about. They're simple, but they're very powerful. So I hope you had fun. hope you had a great time. Um, please leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. My name, once again, is Richard Cronice, which is a unique name. It, I'm the only Richard Cronice in the United States. So I try to do my best in whatever I do and whatever I place on the Internet. So if you're interested, I'm on LinkedIn. Do a search there. I'm always interested in hearing from people who w wish to link up and once again my focus is business analysis project management and SharePoint Microsoft SharePoint I love it I haven't had this this much fun since I began learning Excel years ago thank you so much for dropping by and have a great day